In the last video I took this grill starter and I and I applied a static discharge to the Fluke 101 and it survived. And I had made the comment that I thought that basically any meter would survive this kind of a test because a static discharge like this would be pretty common. This is pretty low energy. I mean, places I've worked at over the years, uh, static discharge testing is pretty common. And I can tell you there's a lot less energy in here versus what I would normally test with using a regular ESD gun. This meter here is still virgin. It's been unmodified. During my search testing, both of these meters were damaged. They've both been repaired using the same parts, but I modified both meters to add additional protection. Now I've gone ahead and removed that protection for this testing, but again, they have been touched. They've been opened, obviously, so I'm sure there's a few people are going to say, oh, that's bullshit, so that's fine. Take it for what it's worth. If they live through this. I'd say, yeah, and your meter doesn't. You got one shitty ass meter. Uh, the the static discharge is just so fast. Uh, those mods wouldn't even come into play. So again, looking at it with AC voltage, 14.45, 46, and then DC, 15.35. We won't make this a long video. I'm not going to zap it like 80 times like I did with that fluke. We'll just hit her a few times here. Five transients with it off. And five with it direct. And then we'll just invert it. Same thing indirect. And direct. And we'll do the same thing for AC volts. And indirect. And again, we'll invert it. And direct. Okay. See how she works. Yeah, and 14.5 and DC 15.4. So the old Maztec, no problem with static discharge. So this is pretty much the cheapest meter I've got. This one came from Harbor Freight. It's about a $20 meter. So let's try the Unity next. This is the UT90A. Here we're looking at the DC voltage. And here again we're looking at AC volt. And we'll do the same thing here. And direct. And we'll flip them. And indirect. And the same thing in AC again. Okay, look at AC volts. And DC volts. Okay, last meter is the SAM probe, the AM510. Again, look at AC voltage. And DC volts. This meter's actually been calibrated. 
if we uh, this is our uh, fluke calibrator this is a one volt signal here and this is a uh, 10 volt signal again this meter was damaged during my surge testing in resistance mode uh, there are several parts that had to be replaced on this one um, again I just used the original parts to replace them so it's basically back to uh, stock I've removed the additional transient protection that I had added so let's uh, let's go ahead and test him again same thing we'll just give it like five pulses Oops. and then we'll invert it how she does so again this is DC volts and AC volts so no problem at all this is the last of my handheld meters I have one additional mass tech but I had uh, actually cut the circuit board to increase the clearances on it I won't test that meter but uh, I'm thinking any meter that's out there should handle a test like this again if you're carrying especially handheld you're carrying that thing around you're not wearing wrist straps and you're walking across the carpeting in the middle of winter things are dry you're going to create a lot more energy than what that little piezo generator will put out so having a meter that'll fail a test like this I mean that's that would be pretty pathetic and I think people just look at uh they look at the high voltages that some of these generators can put out and they'll see it's over 10 kV and you start thinking well there's no way the meter will survive that but you know that's really not the case again the the surge testing that I was doing it was in excess of 10 joules towards the end of the test and you know here we're talking about something that is like basically nothing <laughs> so yeah, it's it's not the voltage that's going to take out the meter. You got to look at the overall energy of the signal.